Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel and in this video tutorial we are talking about fabric weaving and I'm going to show you this basic basket weave technique using fabric strips. If you're completely new to fabric weaving, no worries because I'm going to start you off with the basics. We're going to learn how to make this basic basket weave technique and if you notice I used three different fabrics to create this design. Depending on the color you use, how many different fabrics you use, you can do the same basket weave technique but end up with totally different looks. Here is a simple basket weave technique that I made for the panel first and then I created this really cute over under pouch which is going to be one of my new patterns coming out shortly. Now notice this one only features two different fabric prints and it still looks just as cute. You end up creating your own fabric from just weaving in the fabric strips. So if you think you want to give it a try, keep watching this video. Now let's jump right into the supplies you're going to need so that you too can try your hand at fabric weaving. The key supplies that you're going to need to work on a woven panel are a foam core board, okay, and this is the size that I like to use. I find that it works really nicely. I use the cheapest pins that I have. If I have any bent ones, I'll kind of set them aside, and this is the perfect project to use them in because you're not using them to poke necessarily through and hold layers of fabric. Instead, we're going to use it to hold down the individual strips while we build our woven fabric panel. You're going to need some type of a fabric safe basting glue. Then we have, of course, the key tool to use in these woven panel projects are our wefting needle and the set comes with both of these sizes. This one will work with your half inch wide strips and the larger one for your one inch wide strips. And just so you have a visual, this is a half inch wide strip that you would weave with this one and this is a one inch wide strip for this one. Now to create these strips so that we don't have any raw edges exposed on the side and instead our raw edges are concealed underneath, you're gonna need some bias tape makers. They come in a variety of sizes. The ones that we're using are obviously the ones that need to correspond with the size wefty needle that we're using for the finished strip size. So the smaller one is the half of an inch wide uh, bias tape maker that will work with this. If I'm working on a project with half inch strips, right, I'd use these three things. And then if you're working on a project with one inch wide strips, you use this. Now just to give you a visual, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of a new pattern that I'm going to be releasing soon. And it's going to be for these two little zip pouches. You can see that they look totally different, but they both feature woven panels. This one was obviously done with the smaller strips, so I used a half inch wide wefty needle, half inch wide strips that I made with my half inch wide bias tape maker. Super cute, simple, and very cute and handy. Great gift project. The larger one was done in a more uh, simple like basket weave technique using one inch wide strips and the half, or excuse me, the one inch wide wefty needle. So larger strip, this, and this larger panel. So this pattern is going to be coming up soon, and if you're interested in purchasing a kit so that you'll have all the supplies that you need to make this, definitely use the link in the description box below, or you can also click on the lowercase letter I that you see on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now let's continue on to how to make the strips so that you can move on to creating your own woven fabric panels. Now the first step is to cut our fabric up into the strips that we'll need to feed through the bias tape maker. Read the instructions on the one that you're using and they will usually tell you how wide to cut your strips. For these one inch wide finished strips, I'm gonna cut my strip of fabric to one and three quarters inches wide. Now another thing is that I like to cut my strips out along the crosswise grain because although we're not cutting it out on the true bias, it's also going to allow us for a little bit more give. You can see that it stretches a bit there versus the lengthwise grain, which you can see that it's kind of just like stops and it doesn't stretch as much as the crosswise grain. So orient your fabric so that you have the stretch going along the length of your strip that you're about to cut out. So again, one and three quarter inches, and I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger. Now that I've distorted it, I'll go back and cut it to the exact one and three quarter inch that I want. So I'll turn this over. Make sure I cut it exactly to what I need, one and three quarter inches. Now let's grab our ironing board and continue the process. I have my little ironing board here. I have the bias tape maker. I like to use two pins and I have a little mini iron here set up as well. Grab your strip and lay it on the ironing board pretty side face down. We're going to feed one end through the widest end of the bias tape maker. Now, if you notice, I'm just pushing it in as far as it can go. Right there, it kind of stops. If you tilt your bias tape maker, you'll see that there's kind of a slot there where if you look through it, you can see your fabric. I will take a pin and kind of just scratch that fabric up 
enough so that you start to see the one end of your strip on the opposite side of the bias tape maker. So now I'll scoot it over to the end of my mini ironing board. I'm putting one pin on one side and the other pin on the other side to hold that steady in place. And then we're gonna set this as it's coming out of the tapered end of the bias tape maker, these raw edges are now folded into the center and that is what you wanna set with your hot iron. Now at this point, you can leave it like this, but of course they're not secure. So I typically will just run a line of some basting glue somewhere here, just to help that stay down a bit more. And I'm holding it on the sides, but there's also a little handle here that you can hold on to it by. Or sometimes I will just hold the strip and kind of slide my um, iron back on it. Either way, just kind of make your way down the entire strip to the opposite end. Then remove your pins and you have one completed strip. I typically will go back on this side also and just give it a press to really set that down. You're gonna set this aside and you're gonna repeat that for as many strips as your project calls for. Now my next step is to prep the foundation that I'm gonna start using to kind of be the base for my uh, woven fabric panel. This is where we're gonna be weaving our strips through and all that. So the first thing I wanna do is grab my foam core board and then I'm going to use the foam core board as a template and I'm gonna extend it past because I don't need my uh, woven fusible interfacing to be quite as big as the panel. And I just guesstimate and cut myself a chunk almost to the size of the panel. So you'll see, this is obviously gonna vary depending on the panel that you're gonna be creating for your specific project. So here it is. Now I have laid this on here with the bumpy or rough side face up because as I create the panel of fabric strips woven on top, I'm at the end of it gonna fuse it. So I want the adhesive side to be underneath as the fabric strips are gonna be uh, attached to the top and that will hold it all together to create one solid fabric piece that then we can go back and use for a variety of projects. Now you could tape this down with some washi tape if you wanted to. I just kind of start from right here because I'm gonna start pinning my strips anyways and it's gonna anchor down all the layers. So here I have a bunch of strips that I've already prepped in the same way I just showed you how to do. And I'm just gonna pick some and start working. Now some people will draw lines so they make sure that they're keeping their strips straight. I just eyeball it. My foam core board is straight on all sides. So if I kind of make it parallel to this straight edge, I know I'm gonna be fine anyways, especially if we're gonna be cutting out another shape from the finished woven panel. So I'm gonna put one strip there, have my pins handy, and I'm gonna put a pin in here, and that's going through the fabric, through the woven fusible interfacing, through to the foam core board, okay? That should be nice and secured there. And then I'm just gonna straighten out this strip, And I almost stretch it a little bit, not much, but like I want it to be nice and straight and taut. And then I will put in another pin on this end, okay? Repeat it with the next one and you can alternate this. There's all kinds of different patterns that you can start to create depending on what fabric you're putting where. So here's number two. Side by side, try to make sure there's no gaps in between them. You don't wanna end up seeing the interfacing in the end. And continue doing this until you end up with however many you want to cross for the project that you're going to be working on. All right, and I think that that's plenty to go that way. Now we're going to start weaving in some other strips. And we're just going to do a basic basket weave. So I've set the foundation of these strips going straight down, and I just felt like using this kind of alternating pattern. It could be all one fabric. It could be eight different fabrics. It could be whatever you want. So that's where kind of the artistic part of it comes in because you're basically designing your own fabric made up of individual strips of different fabrics themselves. So now we're going to take our wefty needle and of course I'm using the one inch wide one. I'm going to feed it through here. Imagine this is a needle and this top opening is the needle eye. It's like you're threading it. So I put it so that I'm feeding one end of the pretty side of the fabric through there and then I kind of just pull a little bit of it back. So here I have the part that has the word wefty on it is face up. And this is like if there was thread, just like a needle, okay? And then I'm gonna start on one end and you can start over under if you want to, so I'll show you that. Over the first strip, under the second. Over the third, 
And here's something that comes in handy. If you do them nice and taut like me, you'll see that you might have trouble getting underneath the strip. So that's why I always, no matter which needle I'm using for the project, I always try to keep both of my wefty sizes near me. Because notice as I go under, then over. To go under, I can with my other hand help lift this one up so I can more easily get under it with the one that I'm uh, weaving. Then over this one, and then again, I just have to go under this one. So as I pull through, okay, you'll see that I bring the whole strip with me and I just kind of slide this out. And then I just pull this all the way up, however high I want it, further down, whatever it is that the look that you're going for. But I'm gonna pull it kind of to right there. And again, the same way you did the foundation strips, you're gonna anchor that into place also. And try to keep them as straight as you can. All right. So now the next strip, maybe we'll swap it out and go with one of these and see what we end up with since we're, we have that fabric in the foundation strips as well. So now if we started by going over the first and then under, the next one we're going to alternate it, right? Instead of going over again, we're going to go under the first and over the second. So again, wefty needle, I see the word face up. I get my strip, pretty side is face up. I flip it here and push it through and thread it just like I would a thread through a regular needle. Then instead of going over, we're going to go under the first one. Let me grab my other one. Over the second, under the third, over that one. All right. And then I need to go under this one and over that last one. All right. So we pull it through, pull the wefty needle off and slide it all the way up until it bumps up to the other one so we have no gaps. Again, anchor them down, and that's it, really. You're gonna continue that process all the way down with all your strips, and you're gonna end up with a basic basket weave pro uh, panel. Now, as I do the next strip, some of you may be wondering, well, why are you using the wefty needle? Can't you just weave it by hand? And you can. So I'm going to show you how to do it by hand, and you'll see how much more convenient, easier on the hands, and quicker it is to use the wefty. So let's see. The next strip needs to go under, over, under, over. So I need to manually pick up every single one. And so you can see that for a small panel, that still took me a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. If you're working on a larger piece or something that has dozens and dozens of strips that you need to pin into place, forget about it. Your hands are gonna be aching by the end of just a portion of the finished panel size. So I do recommend the Wefty needle and we do carry it in my online shop right now. I always include links on where you can get the stuff in the description box below and also by using the little letter I on the top right hand corner of the screen. So I'm going to continue doing this and I'll meet you back here when I have the entire little panel completed. Alright, so here is our finished basket weave panel. Now remember that after you fuse that interfacing to the back side of the strips, you're stabilizing them. So you can then go back and use this panel as you would any other chunk of fabric for whatever project you'd like to use it in. Now if you enjoyed this video tutorial and you'd like to try your hand at fabric weaving, remember that I always include a link in the description box below the video. 
and that has links to pages on where you can find the supplies, tools, and materials featured in the video tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit it with the thumbs up below, share it with your crafty friends across the different social media sites, and as usual, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.